Welcome to this BGraphy tutorial. From this video, you will learn how to use tools such as Arc with three points, per plane, polygon, rotate, and centroid. We'll create a parametric arch with polygons positioned along the arch. The polygons will be rotated at different angles. You will be able to control the radius of the arch, the radius of the polygons along the arch, the angle of rotation of those polygons describe. We'll start by adding a range input node to our canvas. We will use it to control the radius of our arch. Let's name it radius and set its default value to 20. Now let's create three points that will define our arch. Add three construct point nodes to the canvas. We will use the multiplication and of course the range input nodes to pass the coordinates to those points. We can create an arc 3 PNT by utilizing these points, which will allow us to define the arc's shape and curvature based on their positions, forming a smooth transition between them. Using perp planes and adding them to the canvas lets us create vertical planes that match the curve of the arc and serve as a base for other design elements. And we'll change its count with the range input node, setting the minimum value to 20 and the maximum to 30. We will using the polygon node, which will allow us to create geometric shapes directly on vertical planes, allowing for precise and consistent placement of polygons along an arc path. By utilizing these range input nodes, we can control both the number of sides of each polygon and the length of those sides. To make the design more dynamic, we'll rotate the polygons. The rotate node handles this, and the centroid node sets the center of rotation by finding the middle of each polygon, so they spin around their own center. We'll using the list sequence SEC node. This node generates a sequence of numbers that represent the rotation angles for each polygon. To use angles in the rotate node, we need to change degrees to radians. The deg to rad node does this. A range input node lets us set the start and end points for the rotation. We can also use a subtraction node to adjust the range of values, creating an accurate and dynamic rotation pattern. And from the vector port, we set which axis it should rotate on. Now, let's play with the sizes of our polygons. The scale node allows us to uniformly scale the polygons. Again, we'll use the center point as the scale center. Here, the range input node allows us to adjust the scale factor. To separate the smaller polygons and work with them alone, we can use the region difference node. It subtracts one shape from another, leaving just the remaining part. To make a surface from the polygons, we use the Curve to Surface node. To add thickness to the surface, we use the Side Thickness node. It turns the surface into a 3D solid with the thickness we choose. We will use multiplication to give this angle the exact thickness where we will find the length of the semicircle. Next, we'll use a division node to fine-tune the rotation steps. Dividing helps create smoother transitions between the polygons. We've now scaled down our polygons, but both the original and scaled versions are cluttering the viewport. We can use the hide function. This tool allows us to temporarily make the original polygons invisible, providing a clear view of the elements we are actively working on. Hiding elements doesn't delete them, 
it simply declutters the viewport. Finally, let's bring our arch structure to life, the Apply Material node. Let's us do just that. We can select from a vast range of colors and customize the surface properties like roughness, metallicity, and opacity. Now let's activate the demo from the menu to the right and see our model. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial helped. For more on computational design, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to get the notifications. See you in the next tutorial.